Today we have with us Moti Gindi, Chief Product Officer at Apiro. Moti, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, great being here again. So thank you for the opportunity. It's my pleasure to talk to you all the time. Today, of course, we are going to talk about a new announcement that you folks are making, which is about extending into supply chain security. But before we go there, just quickly remind our viewers, what is Apiro all about? Apiro is a uh, cloud-based application security platform that helps uh, application security owners uh, and developers and engineering owners to manage their security posture around their software, uh, software development understanding how their code is being built, what is the risks that are found in that code, helping to remediate, prioritize, remediate, and also prevent this risk from ever happening again. Excellent. Thanks for the intro to the company. Now, let's talk about what are you folks announcing today? Pure from day one was focused on helping uh, our uh, um, customers to secure their application and uh, the way that this application is being built and deployed into the cloud. Today, we are announcing a new set of capabilities that are um, added natively into our platform to help identify, prioritize, remediate, and protect from supply chain uh, risks that are generated by the way that the code is being managed, it is being built, and being deployed. When it comes to supply chain security, um, depending on industry depending on how people are consuming what we do know is that more and more people are consuming open source these days and when you talk about open source code base there are different frameworks there are a lot of dependencies even if you're spinning containers you know they have a lot of things inside those containers um, do people really understand the software supply chain i think the the short answer is yes and no i think more and more uh, as always I think more and more, um, everyone that is building, uh, building code is aware today that a large percentage of the code is based on open source, on things that are actually getting from the outsides and incorporating into their code. Uh, they understand that the need to, to find vulnerabilities, understand risks based on this code is part of implementing secure development. But this is the yes part. I think where is the no part is that Thinking about software, your software supply chain is only about your open source vulnerabilities and risks is a limited view. Because when you look really holistically on how your software is being built, open source is part of it, but also the way that you manage your code, the, manage, the way that you build your code, which is based on uh, um, um, SEMs or CI-CD pipelines or the artifactories of containers, all of these elements that are in the background helping you to build the code, the application, and deploy it and manage it are also a source of attack, are also a source of risk. So when you look on software supply chain, you need to look not only on the co proprietary code that uh, you developed and the open source code that you inherited, but also around the entire end-to-end -end, uh, way in which this code is being managed, developed, and uh, uh, deployed. To give a simple example, even to take an extreme case, even if in your organization now there is a malicious insider, a developer that decided to uh, add vulnerable code or a backdoor to your install base, to your code base, this is not a vulnerability. It's not related to open source. It's related to the way that actually your code is being built and developer behavior is part of this uh, way that the code is being built. So being able to detect it and protect from such misaligned developer behavior is in our view, in a peer view, is also part of protecting your supply chain. So the way that we look, we look and we hope the industry and soon the regulation, we look around software supply chain security is in a holistic way. The code that is being built, the process in which it is being built, the way it is handled, managed, deployed and a uh, built and deployed into production. This is a very good point because when we do talk about software supply chain, sometimes we do focus on external components, but you are building a lot of code internally also. Uh, so that is a great point. I kind of draw a parallel with the analogy of automobile industries, you know, because that's where all the components come from. And then if you do not know where the source is of your uh, component, you will not be able to uh, Fixed that problem. Uh, I was going through the press release, and uh, there is also you are also uh, you know natively providing source control management manager there uh, for the CI/CD. So so talk a bit about once again from the perspective of 
knowing what is the source of the code, it could be external, it could be internal. And, and also when you're explaining that, maybe also talk a bit about what are some of the core feature and functionalities that developers or DevSecOps team will get access to through this new uh, announcement that you folks are making today? I'll answer both. I'll start with analogy. I like your car. I will add another one of like when you look at a home that you built, it's clear that when you are entering the home and say, hey, do I want to live here? You need to look at the furniture and the color of the in uh, the color of the floor, etc. But if you are actually doing the right due diligence. You also need to look at the plumbing that is hidden within the, uh, with, behind, uh, under the floor, and also the concrete that was used and the quality of the concrete that was used to actually build the building. And how is the, if there is a gatekeeper at the building, is it someone I can trust? And actually, and that's really the, the key thing, and connect all of that. Okay, so that's the key thing. That's the, really the key basis and thesis around our software supply chain. We think about it not as a standalone solution, but as another component, another way to look at your risk that is part of ASP, um, the term that is industry called ASPM, uh, application security uh, uh, posture, um, um, uh, posture management, sorry. Now, when, and, and Needless to say, this is not a theoretical risk. This is something that is happening more and more, this type of attacks by, again, malicious insiders or attackers that are somehow controlling the way that your code is being built. And by that, they are blind to the normal AppSec tools that are looking for vulnerabilities and issues within the code that were entered uh, by mistake. So adding these capabilities is really a must in order to provide an holistic view. And this is where regulation is also going to. CISA, SSDF, CIS, NIST, um, SALSA, of course, all of these are acronyms of regulations that are looking at the same problem from different uh, angles and putting more and more liability and responsibility on our customers to make sure that not only the, the software is, does not include vulnerabilities, but really that the way that it's being built is safe and controlled. Okay, so... That's really the mission we took when we uh, built the software supply chain security into a PRO. So within that, we, I, um, we divide the set of functionalities that, are, uh, that we are providing and announcing today to four parts. I will touch them and really touch what is really the places that this, that this approach of looking at software supply chain as part of an holistic SPM solution and not a standalone silo provides to our customer. So the first element, as always, is visibility. Understand, like I said, hey, you need to control your, the way that your code is being built. So the first level is understand what are, where your code is being managed. What is the posture of the SCM? Does your repo or branches allow, for example, uh, pushing code without code reviews? Is it something that is happening? How your developers are behaving? Which developers are pushing which type of code to which type of pipe, uh, to, uh, which type of uh, repos? And then how this code is being built? What are the pipelines that are providing, uh, that are building code? Are they vulnerable? Are they configured well? Who has admin rights to them? Do you have admin rights to people that have no, uh, that are actually not accessing? They are not, you are not actually operating under list privileges. And then how the thing that you built is being managed in artifactory content uh, 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 container registries and is being deployed. And can you say that the thing that is now being deployed is the thing that you originally uh, developed? So visibility is kind of the anchor level. And here, last time I've been here, we, I talked about a concept that is called XBOM. Since then, this thing is, uh, this acronym is, uh, is becoming more and more known and not only pushed by us, but the concept was that let's take the good ideas of SBOM, Software Bills of Materials, and enhance them and say, hey, software is not only open source vulnerabilities, but also API, code modules, data models, developers that build the code. So software supply chain is just an addition to this XBOM. Now uh, you can, in Apiro, via our graph-based um, risk uh, engine, you can ask yourself, here is a line of code, which code module it is connected to, which dependency it is being used, in which SCM it is being managed, what are the permissions of this SCM, 
by which pipeline it was built, what are the vulnerabilities of this pipeline, and to which uh, uh, container uh, um, a production pod it was deployed at the end, and is it really the line of code that was originally written by my developer? And of course, who is the developer that did it, etc. So software supply chain is added to our XBOM and to our risk graph uh, engine. This allows, and that's the second layer, a very unique risk, ass uh, risk assessment. There are many software supply chain companies that are or security companies that can look at your posture of your SEM or the posture of the pipeline and find vulnerabilities or find misconfigurations. But this again will be siloed. Again, like in the past, you will get 10,000 alerts of misconfigured repos or misconfigured pipelines, but which are the ones that are really important. This is where the fact that everything is on top of a one platform and connected by this connection of graph allow us to create the notion of chain of risks, or we call them toxic combinations, that allows you, for example, to say, out of all of my pipelines that are repos that, sorry, that are misconfigured, that allow full uh, uh, pu uh, force push, meaning pushing code into production without code review, I want now to handle only the ones, first of all, the ones that allowed force push and build and have an APIs that were added lately without code review and that uh, are deployed to the internet and has no authentication. It means that someone added a risk, imminent risk, an API that has no authentication deployed to the internet and did it without a code review. This is a risk that is above critical. I need to go and handle it today. Uh, today. The only way to identify it is by connecting code API, authentication flows, etc., to the way it was built and deployed, which is without force push, for example, or deployed to the internet. This is an example of a toxic combination of taking vulnerabilities or issues for multiple domains, pipeline security, source code manager security, and API security, and combine them to a risk. Understanding that the risk is not a collection of vulnerabilities, but actually the combination between them. Or this is the only way that you can say, here is a strange developer behavior. Moti is a developer that usually writes in C-sharp on this and this repos. And now Moti added an open source vulnerability to a Python, a Python repo in the middle of the night to make this uh, you know, example more, uh, more romantic. And this is really different than how Moti is operating uh, daily. And now there is now a repo with an open source vulnerability that is exploited from the internet, built and deployed to production. It means that Moti, either Moti is a malicious insider and added a backdoor, or yeah, is, uh, uh, Moti's credentials were obtained and now I have a risk in my, uh, like an attacker used these credentials to add a backdoor to my code. No AppSec tool by itself will identify that and yell on that. But the combination of these things, be taking multiple medium items and making them a new critical thing. So that's really the second layer of the risk assessment and toxic, toxic combination uh, detection that is really unique to an adding software supply chain capabilities into a platform that is doing much more than only supply chain, but actually looking across the whole SDLC from code to cloud. Um, and then, of course, come all of the usual code, like more platform capabilities of a peer of being able to prioritize, remediate, prevent, Pull, uh, stop these uh, 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 threats from entering code at the PR level when you are actually authoring, for example, pipeline configuration files. Uh, but I would say that the uniqueness is around adding these capabilities to XBOM to provide actually visibility that is connected and then using that to create toxic combination detection. This is something that I think you wouldn't find in any other silo or standalone software supply chain uh, security product. Earlier, you were talking about regulations. Um, uh, I want to talk quickly about, since you folks are based in Middle East and of course the whole European market is also there. Uh, recently, European Union came out with CRA, Cyber Resiliency Act, but there has been a lot of criticism that uh, while the intentions are good, they don't fully understand that the responsibility should not be on end developers. It should be more or less on uh, on vendors by developers, they're like, they don't know if my code based Linux kernel, we don't know if the kernel is being used in a submarine uh, or is being used 
in a rocket or a missile. My job is to make sure that this this is the code I wrote. You know, so that's why sometimes when you look at open source code base, use as. Um, uh, do you have any comments on that? Where you see that when it does come to regulations, there should be a participation of public, private sector, all the stakeholders. Uh, just just want to hear your thoughts on that. I think that at the end of the day, uh, owning uh, the security uh, of an application is, I think, as you hinted. Uh, a combination of uh, both the applicative code owners, the ones that are actually writing the code, and their suppliers that are supplying the right components which are secured. And nothing, uh, you can't do anything by um, not communicating or by uh, siloing, trying to say the responsibility is either on that or on that. I, but at the end of the day, and I think CISA, um, is going exactly to that direction in the United States, and I believe firmly this is the right uh, direction, is that the final responsibility of and, uh, the security of application, which means the components of the application, how it, the supply chain of this application, and also the processes that build it, is the final ownership of the one that provides this application. And therefore, CISA is going under, I think there is a call to comments that was launched a couple of weeks ago by CISA to an initiative of a secure, a secure development attestation. Excuse me if I'm not saying the right name exactly, but putting the responsibility of attesting that the code that you provide to your customer, putting the, this responsibility to proact proactively attestation on the CEO or the board of a company which means a company needs to own, like uh, when coming back to the home analogy, when you are the homeowner, you own everything, even the things, you own the responsibility to attest to the quality of everything, even if, not, if it's not, you are not the furniture, but you need to attest to the quality of the table, you are not, sorry, the carpenter, carpenter but you need to attest to the quality of the furniture that are within your home. So this means that it will put higher bar on companies that are supplying software. They will need to be personally attesting. It's not now a vague statement like SBOM was kind of, you need to supply your SBOM. And then, now, but the responsibility to consume this SBOM and understand it was the, uh, the, the responsibility of the ones that actually use that. Now it's going the vice versa. You not, don't need only to supply an SBOM, but you need to proactively attest that you have the right processes, you have the right tools, and you have the right outcome of providing a secure software. I think that this model, which uh, at the end of the day is becoming, pushing software uh, AppSec uh, attestation to become much less voluntary and much more proactively, like again, in a board level or CEO level, is exactly the right, it puts a high bar on all of our customers, but it's the right way to push quality or security um, upstream. Again, I hope it makes sense. I can understand also the fears of customers of saying, but I can't attest. But this is exactly what CISA is pushing and push, putting in higher bar, which I think really is the, right, uh, is the right move to help the entire industry. Otherwise, it's chaos. When we talk about uh, you know, software supply chain security, or when you talk about you know, toxic combinations, are there any specific industries that you look at? And now when we look at industries, it could be industries which are like sensitive, it could be financial or it could be healthcare, or it's about the size of the company as well, that bigger companies versus small company, or you feel, no, this is a problem. It doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter your industry. If you're dealing with software, this should be your problem. So as always, it's a comp it's option B. It's a problem of everyone that is actually writing code, no matter the size of the company and no matter the industry or the regulation. But as always, because there is here a maturity process and regulation is a way, actually, as we talked just earlier about the CISA initiatives and other regulation is really a very effective way to push companies to do things that are otherwise hard to invest in understanding your supply chain and uh, securing it. It's not a trivial thing to do. So I... The value is a value for everyone. I am sure that the first, uh, the first type of um, companies that will adopt it and be the thought leaders and will show the rest of the industry what is the right way to secure uh, application 
code and software supply chain, so the code and the way it is being built and deployed, will be um, industries that are under regulations. The industries that actually, or companies that are mature, and usually it means they are big in their amount of engineers and amount of uh, uh, upset governance, and they learn the hard way that it's much simpler to stop uh, risks from entering the code or to entering the application, then, then, then uh, uh, instead of figuring out after this thing was exploited, see SolarWinds as an example, and try to handle the crisis. So it's relevant for everyone, but it will be a maturity cycle across the multiple years that will start from regulated industries. And how they can get started with these new solutions from Apiro? Customers that have Apiro, it's simply there. It's another capability that we added. And otherwise, it's uh, um, really easy to, cre to create, a, um, um, to ask for a demo and a session with the Apiro representative. And uh, then from there, go to a very easy installation. I need to invest here, uh, to, to emphasize here. The way to start with this solution is simply by connecting Apiro as a SaaS platform, giving it read-only access to your SCM, and start from there. Suddenly you identify pipeline configuration files, you identify code posture issues, you will connect them to API, code module, data, understand toxic combination, simply by giving a read-only access, which is a configuration of probably five minutes uh, to a uh, Apiro SaaS platform. And from there you can grow, connect Apiro also to your pipeline uh, um, uh, ecosystem, uh, to your production ecosystem, to your cloud security posture management system, and then get more and more context. But the beginning is literally, and you can see that in some of the evidence of the PR and the blog, is like the time to value is 30 minutes. Moti, thank you so much for taking time out today. Not only talk about the improving the supply chain posture, but also talk about this new announcement. Thank you so much. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Again, I, I'm, sure we'll, I, I'm, sure we, I'm sure we'll chat again. We are launching tons of new stuff and fun stuff. And thank you again for the opportunity and for your great questions.